Hi everyone, welcome back to Growing Up in Scientology. I want to talk about the Sea Org member who was murdered in Sydney, Australia on January 3rd. I've wanted to put a video up about this earlier, but um, the incident happened just on the very day that me and the family were heading out of town on vacation. And so this is the first opportunity I've had to say something about it. What has really struck me about the reporting on this so far, and also the comments from the Church of Scientology so far, is not what has been said but what has not been said. I noticed that the Church of Scientology, for some reason, went out of its way to make a statement to the police that the murderer, in fact, had lawful reasons to be on the property. That is a very unusual choice of words, um, but right from the beginning, that to me indicated this kid was a Scientologist. The, re the reason I'm calling that out specifically is because the very first reporting on this issue also for some reason went out of its way to say that this kid was a non-Scientologist child of a Scientologist. That was obviously bullshit from the very beginning. When I say that I've been more struck by what has not been said, here's what I mean. Very quickly to go over the details here. We were being told by the press that you had a mother who was a Taiwanese national who was at the Sea Org base, AOSA Chanzo. And then you had the son, a 16 year old male, who went onto the base. There was some unspecified incident that occurred. The son was asked to leave the base. And at some point in the process of being escorted off the base by two Sea Org members, who were undoubtedly security staff, because that's how it works. At some point in the driveway that connects the main facility to the road, some altercation or incident occurred and the 16 year old pulled out a 10 inch knife and either stabbed one of the security guards in the throat or slit his throat or both. That's been reported different ways and stabbed or slashed the other security guard who was an older Sea Org member. And this was being reported as if some 16 year old non-Scientologist was trying to save his mother from doing the purification rundown which is a very low level Scientology action that gets done that involves spending time in the sauna and taking high doses of vitamins. And Scientologists believe that this process rids the fatty tissues in your body of toxins and helps clear your mind and stuff like that. And as this was reported in the first place, it was strikingly obvious that somebody was being fed a complete load of horse shit because none of that makes sense. And I'd like to explain why. All right, well, I hear there's a construction crew now working outside where I'm recording, so we're just gonna carry on. Let's go back to this point of the Church of Scientology going out of its way to make this a statement to the police who went out of their way to make this statement to the media. Uh, the words they used were, he had lawful reasons to be on the property. Well, guess what? That means he's a Scientologist. The AOSA Chanzo is the advanced org and St. Hill for Australia and the entire region. In Scientology, they call it the AOSH ANZO, and ANZO stands for Australia, New Zealand, and Oceania, which is basically just that, that general whole entire area of the Pacific, and it includes Taiwan, it includes Japan, the whole region. In the hierarchy of Scientology, you have different levels of organizations. At the very lowest level, you have missions. Above missions, you have orgs, which are generally class five orgs. Above orgs, you have St. Hills. Above St. Hills, you have AOs, advanced orgs. In some places like Los Angeles, the advanced org and the St. Hill are separate organizations. So in Los Angeles on L. Ron Hubbard Way, at the, at the top of the street, you have Los Angeles org, which is a class five org. Next to Los Angeles org, you have the St. Hill. That St. Hill is called the American St. Hill Organization or ASHO. Further down the street, you have the Advanced Org. That org is called the Advanced Organization of Los Angeles, or AOLA. Now, Los Angeles is the only city off the top of my head I can think of where the St. Hill and the Advanced Org are two separate organizations with two separate commanding officers and two completely separate staffs. In all of the other continents where a Sea Org service organization exists, the St. Hill and the Advanced Org are combined into one organization with one commanding officer and one staff. 
in a normal Scientology organization, all of the courses and auditing that get delivered um, on Scientology's organizing board exists in Division 4, the technical division headed up by the technical secretary. At ASHO in Los Angeles, all of the delivery of Scientology auditing and courses occurs in Division 4. At AOLA in Los Angeles, all of the courses and auditing that gets delivered gets delivered in Division 4. At an organization that's combined, at an AOSH, you have the regular lower level services that get delivered. Those are delivered in Division 4. And all of the advanced courses that get delivered, like the OT levels and the solo auditor course, are delivered in Division 4A. Why am I mentioning this? Because the reporting that occurred on this incident kept mentioning the fact that the mother was at AOSH ANZO, and yet they didn't make any effort to specify whether she was there because she was a Sea Org member, or whether she was there because she was a public. It's relevant to understand how public flow through the various levels of Scientology organizations if we consider that the mother may have been at AOSH ANZO as a public. And if she was a public, then there's no way her son was not a Scientologist. And if she was a Sea Org member, there's also no way her son was not a Scientologist. Now, I don't believe she was there as a public, but the reporting in the beginning would have led one to believe she was. Because if she was actually a staff member at the Sea Org base, then you would have expected that to have been included in the reporting that was done on this murder. Because the fact that she would have been a staff member there, or perhaps somebody who was there joining staff, totally invalidates any idea that her 16-year-old son would not have been a Scientologist, or at least would not have been as much of a Scientologist as his mother. Perhaps they were both relatively new to Scientology. But all of the data was pointing to the fact that there's no way this scenario involved a mother who was deeply or perhaps not so deeply involved in Scientology and a son who was just some unknowing, unsuspecting non-Scientologist who happened to be along for the ride. And the reason why I want to point out that all of the information indicates the son was just as involved in Scientology as the mother was is because it completely invalidates this idea that somehow they were having an argument about the purification rundown. The purification rundown is not controversial within Scientology. The purification rundown is not considered a big deal within Scientology. The information about the purif that exists online when you read about people dying while doing the purif, I'm almost positive the incidents that you will read about are actually referring to the Narconon program. And the Narconon program is a drug rehab program. It's a, it's a Scientology-based drug rehab program. And five to 10 people in recent history have died at Narconon facilities um, while undergoing the program. And the Narconon program does use the purification rundown. But I'm almost positive, and if I have this wrong, please just uh, point it out in the comments down below. Um, I believe the deaths that have occurred at the Narconon program are related to drug overdoses and drug withdrawals. I do not believe those deaths were directly related to undergoing the Purif. The reason I'm pointing this out is that, that in 15 years of, of my having directly been involved in the delivery of Dianetics and Scientology at the Class 5 organization level, at the St. Hill level, and at the Advanced Org level, never once have I ever heard one or more Scientologists having a conversation or an argument or a debate or some controversy surrounding the Purif. It is considered the most normal, harmless action. Every single Scientologist does the Purif as one of their very first actions in Scientology. Some people do the Purif three times, four times, five times. Kids do the Purif, adults do the Purif. You would never hear a Scientologist arguing with another Scientologist about the Purif. It's just a non-thing. It doesn't happen. It doesn't exist. This is not a thing. And so the only scenario that I could envision that maybe a son was trying to save his mother from doing the Purif would be if you had some brand spanking new Scientologist with a non-Scientologist son. And the son had maybe dug up some information about the Purif online 
and was having an argument with his mother about whether she should do this. And that is something that could possibly happen. However, it would never happen at an AOSH because brand new Scientologists do not do services at an AOSH. And that's why I explained the levels of organizations. It's already known and accepted as true that the 16 year old was a Taiwanese national, that his mother was a Taiwanese national, and that the security guard who was murdered was a Taiwanese national. That is relevant. I also noticed that in the press, there did not seem to be any effort to clarify other than calling them Taiwanese nationals. There was not an effort to clarify whether they were just in the country on a tourist visa or a religious worker visa or as Taiwanese nationals, had they been residents of Sydney for quite some time. There was no effort to get this question answered. And the reason I say there was no effort isn't that they didn't already have the answers. But in, that, in the reporting that I saw, the questions had not been asked. Normally in an article, you'll see um, questions we have not been able to get answered are this and this and this or something like that. The articles just left me with the impression that the people working on this reporting did not seem to think it was a relevant fact to fully understand what had transpired here. Were these people public? Were they Sea Org members? Did they live in Australia? How long had they been there? Because also the people working on the reporting don't necessarily know how those facts would help them understand organizationally within the AOSH and within the Sea Org and within Scientology, what likely happened here and why. Now, also in the original reporting that I saw, it's always a red flag for me when I see things reported in the news that are allegedly being quoted or sourced from other people who we are being led to believe are Scientologists or knowledgeable of the world of Scientology. And yet the language that gets used in the reporting is completely off. And in this scenario, what I'm talking about is the original reporting referred to the mother going through a purification ceremony. If the, if the news reporters who were working on this were getting their information directly from a knowledgeable source, they never would have used the language purification ceremony. Such a phrase or language doesn't exist in Scientology. And anyone with even a mild familiarity with Scientology would never use the word purification ceremony. So either the reporters were getting information from someone who themselves had no idea what they were talking about, or the reporters were really just that careless that they altered the information they were receiving from a source who might have known what they were talking about. That is always a red flag for me when I see that happen. And I'm pointing out that red flag because I'm comparing what I read in that article. As soon as I saw purification ceremony, I was like, these guys are sourcing their information from someone who does not know what they're talking about. And I compare that to the other information that somehow a mother and a son were having a heated contentious debate over whether to do the purification rundown. And to me, those two things were like, yeah, this is nonsense. They're getting their information from someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, or they're treating it so carelessly that they are misreporting what happened here. The only scenario I could come up with that could maybe make all of that information that seemed like bullshit possibly make sense is if it wasn't doing the pure, if it wasn't the fact of doing the pure, that was being argued about. But perhaps they were arguing about time. Perhaps the mother and son had traveled to AOSH for a specific purpose, whether it was to get auditing, whether it was to join the Sea Org or whatever. Those are really the only two reasons anybody from Taiwan would travel to AOSH Hanzo. To get upper level auditing, which means they're not new Scientologists, or to join the Sea Org, which means they could be new Scientologists because you don't have to have been in Scientology for a long time to be allowed to join the Sea Org. And perhaps the son decided not to join the Sea Org. Perhaps he said, no, I'm done, I don't wanna do this. And then perhaps the mom was like, no, I'm doing this. I I've gotta do this. And for whatever reason, the mom was doing the purif. The purification is not a prerequisite to join the Sea Org, but there could be various reasons why she was doing the purif. It's not unusual. And perhaps they were arguing about whether to go back to Taiwan or not. And it was only an incidental fact that the mom was doing the purification rundown at the time. That could make sense. So in a nutshell, I guess my comments on the initial reporting is that it was very, very obvious, the narrative that this 
new Scientologist mother had flown 4,500 miles from Taiwan to AOSA Chanzo to do the Purif, somehow accompanied by her 16-year-old non-Scientologist son, who then subsequently tried to save her from the Purif, and in the subsequent battle to save his mother from this terrible abuse, wound up fighting with a Sea Org member and stabbing him to death, was complete bonkers. And I very, very much question where the reporters working on this story were sourcing their quotes from. And the fact that the Church of Scientology itself had not immediately tried to distance itself from this 16-year-old was an indication to me that he was indeed a Scientologist, if not a Sea Org member because they would be immediately putting as much distance as possible between them, them and the killer to whatever degree they thought they could get away with. A 16-year-old non-Scientologist does not just accompany his Scientologist mother to AOSA Chanzo, no matter what reason the mother is going there. It doesn't matter if she's there to join the Sea Org. It doesn't matter if she's there to get auditing. You don't just bring a non-Scientologist along as a tag along. That's not how it works. You need clearance to be on the base. You need to book this stuff in advance. It was reported elsewhere that perhaps AOSA Chanzo is so desperate for public that they would convince a brand new Scientologist who had never even done the purification rundown to fly 4,500 miles from Taiwan where they have a giant organization that is in the business of delivering the purification rundown to do the purification rundown at AOSA Chanzo. This is simply not true. It is true that a Saint Hill that is desperate for public will go out to class five orgs and round up as many public as they can to come to the St. Hill for services. But they only do that to public that the org is not capable of delivering to. So for example, if someone has paid a class five organization tens of thousands of dollars to get new era Dianetics auditing that requires a class five auditor, and some orgs don't have a lot of class five auditors, staff from the St. Hill would go on uh, tours to these orgs and say, good, we want a list of all of your public who are fully paid up through New Era Dianetics, who you do not have the resources to deliver to. We at the St. Hill have auditors sitting around doing nothing, waiting for pre-clears. Give us the PC folders of all these people you're not able to deliver to, and we're gonna get them arrived to the St. Hill. We're gonna get them delivered to immediately. That is a normal thing to do. You would never, ever, under any circumstances, do that with someone on the purification rundown. Because those class five organizations are in the business of delivering the purification rundown. They can deliver it to almost an unlimited number of people. It doesn't take any resources really to deliver the purification rundown. And those lower level organizations, the class five organizations, have a right to not let the AOSH steal their public. They do have a right. The AOSH is a higher level organization only in the respect that they can deliver higher level services. But the AOSH does not have any managerial authority over the lower level class five organizations. So if I was a staff member at the Taiwan org and some staff member from AOSH Anzo came to my org and wanted me to let them take my Purif PCs, I could tell them to go fuck themselves. And that is exactly what orgs do when St. Hills or advanced orgs show up trying to poach public that the org wants to hold on to. This whole narrative that somehow a brand new public wound up at AOSA Chanzo on the Purif uh, with a non-Scientologist son who just happened to be tagging along for no apparent reason, who was so antagonistic to Scientology that he wanted to save his mother from the Purif, something that has never happened in the history of Scientology, and was so angry about it that he murdered a Sea Org member in the ensuing confrontation. This was so obviously bullshit right from the beginning. There's only two reasons this woman would have been at AOSA Chanzo. Either one, she was a very wealthy public and she was still a lower level, relatively new Scientologist. And the Seerg members at AOSA Chanzo convinced her to come and do her entire bridge from the bottom to the top in one fell swoop. 
And even that explanation I knew had almost no chance of being correct because the purification rundown is the very first thing you do in Scientology and the registrars at AOSH Anzo would have never had any way of knowing about this woman or whether she was wealthy until she'd already gotten into the Taiwan organ, started doing services, and she already would have done the purification rundown. And yes, you can do the pure of two times, three times, four times, five times, but never that close to each other. You usually do it years and years later if you're gonna redo it. So the only likely explanation was that this woman was a Sea Org member. And if she was a Sea Org member, and her 16 year old son is with her, then he was there to join the Sea Org as well, or he was a Sea Org member. And the fact that I knew that was the most likely explanation, just based on the, on the data that had been reported, and based on the fact that the church had not come out to specify he was not a staff member, to me indicated both of these guys were Sea Org members, or both of these guys were there to join the Sea Org. So here we are, it is Monday morning, January 14th. There has been some additional reporting. On Tony Ortega's blog this morning, he reports, and I, I, this might be someone who's just talking to Tony, because I did not see Brian Seymour include this information in the reporting that was done today. Tony says, a Sydney church member who asked not to be named tells us that the mother had been brought to Australia from Taiwan to join the Sea Org and was doing the Purif as an initial step. But it's not clear if her son objected to her making the Sea Org commitment or if he objected to her simply doing the Purif or both. We are still missing something here. If the mother traveled from Taiwan to Sydney to join the Sea Org and she brought her 16-year-old son along with her, he was there to join the Sea Org as well. There is no other plausible explanation for this. Sea Org recruiters would never ever in this day and age let a grown woman with a 16 year old son come to sydney let the woman join the sea org and let the son do what what's the 16 year old gonna do get an apartment get a job no that's an out qualification for the sea org is having minors who are dependent on you is an out qualification these days for it makes you unqualified for the sea org so what other explanation could exist Maybe the 16-year-old was going to join the cadet org. No, you cannot put a 16-year-old in the cadet org. Never mind the fact the Church of Scientology says the cadet org doesn't exist anymore. So um, is it possible that both of these guys, the mother and the son, were relatively new Scientologists who had been convinced to join the Sea Org? Yes, that is absolutely possible. Once we assume these guys were there to join the Sea Org, the whole levels of organization uh, deal doesn't really matter. You can recruit brand new people to the Sea Org. And by the way, doing the purification rundown is not a prerequisite for the Sea Org. So there's still something off here. Now, it's possible that uh, whoever was giving final approval on letting these guys join the Sea Org said, ooh, maybe these guys are a little too new. Maybe these guys are just too new. We don't even know if they're really Scientologists yet. We don't, uh, the Sea Org does not like uh, having brand, brand new people join the Sea Org. It's too much of a culture shock. Depending on where you are, you can get away with it. A recruiter who's hard up for recruits will do it, but it's a sore spot. So it's quite possible, it would be a huge mistake, but it's quite possible that someone convinced these guys to fly 4,500 miles to Australia to join the Sea Org. And once they got there, they were told, oh, we don't think you've had enough auditing yet. We don't think you're experienced and seasoned enough yet. You haven't even done your Purif after all. Why don't you guys should just, you guys need to do the Purif. Now, this would be a classic Scientology bait and switch. Classic Scientology bait and switch. Uh, the, the next question would become, well, were they then told they had to pay for it? Because if you're in the Sea Org and you do the Purif, you don't have to pay for it. So like, how would this have gone down exactly? Come to, come to Australia, join the Sea Org at AOSA Chanzo. Oh, sorry, you're not qualified. You need to do the Purif and eh, you're going to have to pay for it. Like this can get pretty messy pretty quickly. It is almost a certainty. They were both there joining the Sea Org. And guys, that is so bad for the Church of Scientology. So bad. Now compare that to the initial reporting that gave everybody the impression the mother was just a public Scientologist doing the Purif. Some of the initial reporting even implied that the son must have been so distraught 
that he was probably being told his mother had to disconnect from him. And he was so distraught over this that he murdered someone. Uh, it, it, some really irresponsible and careless theories were being thrown around for why this kid murdered someone. Now, one point I really want to make here is that anybody trying to draw a direct cause and effect relationship here between whatever occurred organizationally and the fact that a 16-year-old ended up stabbing a Sea Org member in the throat to death, I think has some serious problems. Murder is not a normal or rational response to almost anything. This 16-year-old very obviously had some kind of terrible mental breakdown. I can understand that if you hear a news story about a young son or daughter murdering their parents or a parent, um, I think it is very rational and makes sense to go, holy shit, what the fuck did they do to that kid to make him do that? This kid murdered an innocent Sea Org member who was just escorting him off of the base. And there's no reason to believe, there's been no evidence provided to even indicate that this 16 year old had been subjected to any kind of abuse. And the early speculations that I had seen were that he was probably being told to disconnect from his mother. Uh, he was so angry. He was so terrified for his mother's safety during the purification rundown. He must have been so distraught over it that he was just doing this to protect his mother and save his mother. In my opinion, these were not rational conclusions to jump to. We don't have to bend over backwards to rationalize or justify murder. I think it is perfectly acceptable to say, Jesus Christ, this kid had a mental breakdown and the results were tragic. This is not even the first time in Scientology that a young Scientologist has stabbed someone to death. Just look on Google for Ellie Perkins. In fact, look at the interview that I did on this channel with Jeff Carlson, who was Ellie's son-in-law. And he discusses what happened with his brother-in-law, who, prior to murdering his mother, was very, very obviously mentally unstable. So much so that his own mother, who was the executive director of the Buffalo Org at that time, had even considered getting him psychiatric help, which for a Scientologist is unheard of. And so I would just ask everyone to keep in mind that whether the mother and the son were there to join the Sea Org, whether, whether they were bait and switched in a recruitment situation, whether the son wanted to go back to Taiwan and the mom didn't and they were having an argument about it. None of this explains or justifies murdering a Sea Org member. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. And I realize we are of course still in the world of speculation. And we always have been right from the beginning. I've been speculating from the beginning. The news media has been speculating from the beginning. People watching all of this have been speculating. I realize my speculations are really just criticizing other people's speculations. I've laid it out the way that I have so I could explain why to me it was so obvious that a lot of those speculations were, were obviously off base. But here's a speculation I'm going to make. I'm going to speculate that the mother and the son both went to join the Sea Org and that this son did have some prior signs or history or something of serious mental instability. And I'm going to speculate that the recruiters and the ethics staff members and the mom and the son were in the process of trying to figure out what the hell they were gonna do about this. Um, and when I say do about this, I mean, they had just flown 4,500 miles to join the Sea Org. It would make perfect sense to me if they were trying to figure out whether both the mother and the son were gonna go back to Taiwan, whether the son had other family members he could go back to Taiwan with. Maybe the son wanted to go back to Taiwan, but the mother didn't want him to. Maybe the son wanted them both to go back to Taiwan, but the mother didn't want to go back. Any sorts of things could have been what was happening. I guess I just feel the need to personally say that I reject any effort to try and explain that the reason this 16 year old murdered a Sea Org member is because of what was done to him, as opposed to 
The reason this 16-year-old murdered a Sea Org member is because he was intensely mentally unstable and had some kind of a break. We don't need to justify murder. There's tons of former Scientologists who have been subjected to some of the most terrible abuses you could imagine. None of them killed someone over it. No matter what was going on in this scenario, this guy killed an innocent person. I just hope everyone keeps that in mind. When I saw the initial reporting, I also said, if this kid had not been a Scientologist, or if this kid had not been a Sea Org member, they would already be trying to blame Leah Remini and Mike Rinder and the Scientology in the Aftermath show for this murder. They've been trying to pin everything they can on the show. And lo and behold, on January 11th, the Church of Scientology sent a letter to A&E, or Disney, blaming the show for the murder. So once again, let's look at not just what was said, but what was not said. They say, the assailant had stated his intent to burn down the church. The attacker was inspired by an anti-Scientology website that featured your people and included a link to Remini's show. One of the biggest things they do not say here is, when did the assailant state his intent to burn down the church? And you already told the police that the assailant had lawful reasons to be on the property. I'm sorry, Church of Scientology. When did you become in the habit of letting people who had threatened to burn down the church onto the premises of your advanced Sea Org bases. Not even a normal Scientologist can just walk onto an AOSH base. Since when do you let people on the base who have threatened to burn the place down? So obviously bullshit. And then, the attacker was inspired by an anti-Scientology website that featured your people and included a link to Remedy's show. Which website? You are, the Church of Scientology wants to create the impression that the killer was motivated by the TV show. And yet, they don't even say the killer ever saw the TV show. You know, you know what website the killer could have been reading? Freedom.org. You know what website he could have been reading? Standleague.org. The Church of Scientology's own websites fit the description of featuring your people and including a link to Remini's show. And, and this is a letter from Scientology, so you know they're already going to make it as bad and salacious and false as possible. And they still stop short of saying that the killer had seen even one episode of Leah Remini's show. An anti-Scientology website with a link to the TV show. What, what is that, Reddit? Is that Twitter? Is that Facebook? And also I noticed that in this letter, they did not make any effort to call the killer a non-Scientologist. They didn't make any effort to clarify whether he was a public or a staff member or a Sea Org member or was doing the EPF. I don't really think that the geniuses over at the Church of Scientology are expecting anybody to compare the wording of this letter to A&E to the statements that the church has already made to the police and the news media in Sydney, Australia. Um, I don't think it occurred to them that we have a timeline problem here. If this kid and his mother were in Sydney to join the Sea Org, then at what point are we supposed to believe he was exposed to the anti-Scientology information on the internet? At what point are we supposed to believe he threatened to burn down the church. You know, they keep talking about this domestic dispute that occurred the day before the killing. They keep talking about this incident that occurred on the AOSH base that led to him being escorted off. I think chances are this guy got into an argument with someone on the AOSH base and said something like, I'm going to burn this place down, you know. First of all, you have to be highly, highly mentally unstable to murder someone. You have to be mentally unstable to walk onto a Sea Org base with a 10-inch knife concealed on you. 
I'm just posing the question, did the Church of Scientology invite a 16-year-old who had been reading anti-Scientology stuff on the internet and had threatened to burn down the church, did they invite this person to come to Sydney to join the Sea Org? Or maybe what happened is the kid had a terrible experience on the EPF for some reason. And you combine that with deep mental instability, which I find very hard to believe had never reared its ugly head earlier on. I find that very, very hard to believe. You don't just go from being totally normal to walking around concealing a 10 inch knife and snapping and slitting someone's throat and murdering them. So I've tried to cover a lot of bases in this video. I tried to point out what were obvious indiscrepancies or contradictions in the original reporting that to be totally fair would not really be evident to a reporter reporting on Scientology. There's no way to know that these things are red flags without being intimately familiar with how the Church of Scientology works and the level of organizations and the likelihood of this happening or the likelihood of that happening. So it wasn't really an effort to criticize the reporting that's been done. It was just me explaining uh, the thoughts I was having as I was reading this. I was going, that's wrong, that's bullshit, that doesn't make sense. And on the back of that going, and who is it that's providing this information to try to get people to believe this was all an argument about the purification rundown? Because whoever's doing that is doing something very weird. So the Church of Scientology is going to do everything it can to create the impression that somehow the Scientology and the Aftermath TV show radicalized this individual to the extent that he committed a hate crime against the Sea Org members. But anybody working on the reporting on this subject should turn it right back around and demand that the Church of Scientology explain the timeline. Demand the Church of Scientology explain why the mother and the son were in Sydney, when they got there, how long they had been there, were they both on the EPF, had they started the EPF, had the kid been offloaded from the EPF, why was the mother there doing the pure fish if she was there to join the Sea Org? One is not necessarily related to the other. What were the details of the domestic argument that allegedly occurred? Were they being prevented from going back to Taiwan? Were their passports and visas being held? The authorities should also know all of the spaces and premises at AOSA Chanzo are constantly under audio video surveillance. Everything is recorded. All the spaces, all the offices are recorded. Anything other than full disclosure from the Church of Scientology over exactly what these arguments were about, exactly what caused the altercation, exactly why the teenager was being escorted off the premises should be rightly construed as an effort to obstruct justice and block the investigation. The real reason things like this happen in the Church of Scientology is because it is forbidden in Scientology to get professional mental health care, even in the gravest and most serious of circumstances. Scientology does not have the tools to treat mental illness. And what happens when you're convinced that you do, and when you teach people that any form of mental health care outside of Scientology is dangerous and evil, you wind up with seriously mentally ill people who have nowhere to turn for help and eventually Really bad things are going to happen. Once more, we have seen a terrible, tragic taking of life that could have been prevented, possibly, if he had, earlier on, had access to professional mental health care. Those are all the thoughts I wanted to share on this. I hope we're able to see a lot more of the details come out. I hope we're able to get answers to some of these unanswered questions moving forward. If this thing actually goes to trial, wow, the Church of Scientology is in for a world of hurt. Because the more details we get, we're going to learn just exactly how involved these people had been in Scientology, and we're going to learn just how involved the Sea Org members at AOSH ANZO were in the events leading up to this terrible tragedy. That's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then 
you could click what's inside here. If you have six squares or not, subscribe right here. Bye!